Okay, this is going to be a tutorial on how to write a basic animation program with Allegro using the C++ language. Before you can write an animation program, you need a series of sprites showing a movement. So you can either draw your own sprite or you can uh, just um, search some on Google. So right now I'm just typing in Sonic Sprites. It looks like this one might do the job. So I'm going to copy it, open MS Paint. And I am going to paste that. Now, there, there are a lot of sprites here, but I don't need all of them, I just need a couple of them. So, I am just going to pick a series of sprites that shows Sonic walking. So, okay, found it. So, right here. Seems like this is showing him walking. So what I did there, I just selected the select tool, and I'm just gonna select all the sprites I want. I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna open a new MS Paint. I'm not gonna save it because I don't need it, and I'm gonna paste. Now I have my this is the sprite I need. Next step is to change the background of that picture to magic pink because Allegro will set that to transparency for you if you ask it to. So go into colors, edit colors, define custom colors. Magic pink is 255 red and 255 blue and it's zero green. I'm going to press add to custom colors, OK. I pick the fill tool and then I click on my image and now it's magic pink. Next step is to reduce this window to the size of the picture. Okay. Now I want to save my picture in the exact same folder that I'm going to save my program. So if the program is in say folder demo, I want to save my picture in the same folder. And I'll, um, I'm going to save it as a 24 bitmap, big bitmap. So I'm going to write the program and then I'm going to come back and show you. Okay, I'm back. Now, what you want to do now is to first zoom in because you want to find the coordinates of each of those sprites. All you need is the upper left corner, the coordinate of the upper left corner. So for this sprite right here, I would use 0, 0, and for this sprite here, I would use, seems like, 30, 0. So, if you look here, where my cursor is, on the lower right corner, MS Paint will show you the coordinates of wherever your cursor is on the bitmap. So just record all of the upper left hand corners of each sprite and then once you've done that you can start writing the code. Okay. As you can see now I've declared two bitmaps, one called buffer. I've declared two bitmaps, one called buffer, the other one sprite. Buffer is where I'm going to draw everything. Sprite is what the, the bitmap I'm going to, is where I'm going to load 
the bitmap I just saved. I've also defined, I've also declared three integers, pick position y, pick position x. Those are for, this, this is the location where the, your picture will be on the buffer. And frame, well frame is just so that I can tell the program which frame to draw. And right here, those are just the uh, basic codes, lines of code you would write on pretty much any Allegro program. And this is where I am telling the program to load my bitmap. My bitmap is called Sonic Wall. So, there. Now, this portion is where is the most important one. This is actually much the code. It says while I'm not pressing the key escape, do all these. So if I press the key left and if frame has a value of zero, and remember I've initialized frame to zero up here. If all these are true, let this portion of the of the bitmap. So as you can see here, using the blit function, 38 and 0 are x and y coordinates of the upper left corner of your bitmap. So remember, um, 38, 0 would be, let's see, be somewhere somewhere around here. It would be 380 right here. So this continues for every single frame. So frame zero, frame one, frame two, etc. So you just do that for each frame. Also another important thing is this those two numbers are, well, this number right here is the height of your sprite, and this is the width of your sprite. You can figure this out by, again, going in MS Paint and also find the height. You just put your cursor, cursor here, and right here for me, it's 49. And then to find the width, you can just check it for probably each if you want to find what's best. But for me, each each sprite is at least 30 pixels apart. So, yeah. The most important part is that after each if statement the program goes all the way down and it draws whatever you told it to draw on the buffer and it draws the buffer to the screen it rests for 100 milliseconds and it increments frame so if frame was zero at the beginning the next time it calls frame is gonna be one. The next time it goes through that um, this loop, it's not really a loop. But it's kind of like a loop, but um, frame is going to be two, and it's going to keep going until it reaches frame seven. Now, after the after frame seven, it's going to increment it again. And it's gonna make it to frame eight, but I don't have a frame eight. So if it if I don't have this function right here, it's just gonna attempt to draw something, but nothing's gonna appear on the screen. So what I do here is if it's frame eight, I'm gonna set frame back to zero. So it's gonna go back and start at frame zero, and then go through all the whole thing again. Now this right here. 
this is the rectangle function I'm calling. This is to prevent smudging. If I don't include this, um, the bitmaps is just going to be smudging all over the screen. So I'll, sh I'll show you how it works in a second. So the rest of the code is just me releasing the screen and then destroying the bitmap. So um, I'm going to give you guys a little preview of what it looks like. Alright, because of the way I wrote the code, nothing's going to appear on the screen until I press the key left. So I don't have anything up here. So nothing's going to appear on the screen until I press the key left. Also, once I'm done pressing the key left, everything's going to disappear also. You could write a function that says if the key is, if I'm not pressing the key left, draw sprite draw frame zero but I'm not gonna do that right now you guys could probably figure out how to do that now as you can see that in the animation I just showed you Sonic is walking on the same place it's not moving around you probably wanna like make it move around the screen so all you have to do is just change the pick position X of well the bitmap so this is it right there now since you're moving to the left you want to decrease it so I'm just going to decrease it by by, uh, by 10 you can decrease it by whatever you want so I'm going to show you how that works As you can see there's a lot of smudging. That is because the rectangle is fixed. The rectangle is not moving along with the bitmap. If you want to prevent the smudging, you'd have to have the rectangle move with the bitmap. But um, I'm not going to show you that right now, but I, I mean in a later video I'll show you guys, but it's pretty simple. I'm pretty sure you guys could probably figure it out. Oh, almost forgot. Um, I'm going to show you guys what the rectangle does in this particular function. So, I'm just going to make this a comment and make the rectangle a comment. Now I'm going to run the program again and you can see all the smudging. So there you have it. If that rectangle is not here, there's going to be a lot of smudging and you don't want that. So um, that's pretty much it. That's how you would write a animation program. Well actually, I mean, you probably wouldn't necessarily write it like this because this is literally probably the longest way of writing it. All those if statements could be reduced to a couple lines of code. For, um, what you would do is just multiply the frame by the width of your sprite and pretty much you would take care of all those